of the victory. We are more than conquerors. This is a finished situation. Don't worry about how it look. Don't worry about how it look. We have the victory. Y'all hear me? Yeah. We have the victory. Yeah. Stop your complaining. Stop your foolish thinking. Because we have the victory. Yeah. All right. Yes, sir. Amen. Look like Elandi is ready to roll. I was told Go. to come up right at the end of the songs. I'm ready. <laughs> um, I want to thank Pastor Hannah for picking the songs and even the scripture because they, they correlate so well with the emphasis today on the persecuted church. And uh, the day, the communion time is going to be a little bit different. Basically, I'm going to read through this scripture with you all. And I want you to think about the words because there's a big correlation between uh, the persecuted church and what Jesus went through when he was going to the cross for us. All right, so meditate on the words as we read them together. It's 1 Peter 3.18, Isaiah 53, verses 3 through 10, and Romans chapter 5, verse 6 through 8. I'll read leader and you guys respond with all. For Christ died for our sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. He was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain like one from whom people hide their faces. He was despised, and we held him in low esteem. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people, he was punished. Yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his off offspring and prolong his days and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. Just three quick little points just to tie that all together. First of all, our communion time is done because God wants us to remember our salvation, what he did for us. He says, do this remembrance of me. So it's a time for us to reflect on that great salvation. And as we remember the persecuted church today, we see the great similarities between what Christ did for us and how he suffered for us and what he went through and how many Christians today suffer around the world because they want to share that same love that Christ had for us. And so a lot of times they go through persecution, much like Christ went through. And the last point that highlights, I think, our communion time is because we, like the rest of the world, have all gone our own way. Our missionaries and fellow Christians around the world can tell others that Christ has died for them. And they can become Christians, although even now we are still sinners and Christ had died for us in our sin. So that same good news, the fact that Christ died for us, our missionaries, our other Christians around the world are taking that same good news to others and sharing with them that even now while you're a sinner, Christ has died for you. And much of them are, are suffering persecution because of that. So let's think on those things as we sing the next song. Tie it together. Tie the fact that Christ went through so much when he died for us in that last time of communion. Uh, what he was going to face after that 
and how so many Christians around the world are facing persecution. As we, as we break the bread too, if you're a Christian, take the bread, hold it until we all eat together. If you're not a believer, let it pass by and then we'll all eat together.
Pastor Hannah? Pastor Hannah, we're going to do that one more time. From the top, on call. The whole thing. The whole thing. Okay. okay. Each I the, believe. Each I, of the stems. Each of the stems. Okay. I believe there is an appropriate time and place for reflection. In our worship, we must remember why we've come. It's about the Savior. It is about what he's done for you, yes, but you know, he thought about you and you weren't interested in him. Listen to this, listen to this. Bearing shame and scoffing rude. In my place condemned he stood. Sealed my pardon with his blood. You're supposed to say hallelujah. If you understand what salvation means to you, that's a place for you to scream out. Hallelujah. What if he hadn't done that for me? I'd still be standing there with no answer from the top. Yeah. 
think uh, praying for the persecuted church makes the communion time even more special. Wouldn't you agree? When you really think about it. Um, the night before Jesus was betrayed, knowing what he had to face the next day must have really been something. I think most of us would have died of a heart attack that night. Would not have been able to face the next day, but he did because he knew what he was doing for us. So he took bread, something simple that we use every day. He took it, he broke it, he gave it to the disciples and said, this, is my, this represents my body. Eat this, do this in remembrance of me. And likewise, he took a cup of juice and he gave it to them. He said, drink, this represents a new covenant that I have with you. Drink in remembrance of me. Let us do the same. Are you looking forward to his return? Boy, sometimes when you wake up in the morning and everything is hurting, Lord, come now. When you see those bills, Lord, where are you? Jesus, take the wheel. Let's together just reflect on his words as we remind ourselves that he is coming back. He is coming back for the redeemed. And we are going to read this morning from Isaiah 53, 11 and 12, Zechariah 12 and 10, verse 13, chapter 13 and verse 6, Revelations 1 and 17, Isaiah 52 and 10. Just looking forward to his return, our Lord and Savior. After he, was, he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured out his life unto death, and was numbered with the transgressors. For he bore the sins of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. They shall look upon me, whom they have pierced. One shall say, What are these wounds in thine hands? He cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. The Lord had made bare his holy arm in the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Let's stand together as again we look forward to the return of our Lord, our risen Savior, our soon coming King.
He's coming back, Grace. He's coming back. As we continue our focus on the suffering church, I'm going to invite Elder Andy, you know, to come at this time and to introduce a video presentation. All right, what we want to do uh, as far as praying for the persecuted church, we're going to have a four minute video, uh, Gospel for Asia. Uh, it ha really highlights a lot of the needs in different countries and what a lot of the believers are going through. Uh, we're going to show that, and then after that, we're going to highlight the things that you saw in the video. We'll have the countries and the needs will come up and the prayer emphasis, all right? So we'll go to the video, then after that, we'll put up on the screen for everybody to break into groups four or five, and we'll take between five and 10 minutes and pray for the needs that you see represented in the video. Now, there might be other needs you know as well. There's other countries that aren't listed, but you know like Iraq, Iran, Afghanistan. There are some of the ones that might not be listed, but you can pray for those countries too. A lot of the Arab countries that the Christians are really um, persecuted in, all right? Last year, more than 765 churches were destroyed in Nigeria. Pastor Eugen, a missionary to Bhutan, was sentenced to prison. His crime? Showing a film on the life of Jesus. After communism took over North Korea, an estimated 300,000 Christians disappeared. The scripture says in Hebrews 13 that we should understand the brothers and sisters that are being persecuted and suffering and our attitude should be as though we actually are chained with them in prison, being abused. This should create not only sympathy, but the inner drive for us to pray and intercede and agonize for them. This way, we share in the suffering of Christ on the behalf of his body, our brothers and sisters. Please, let us give priority for prayer at this time on the behalf of the suffering people of God around the world. On the first day of classes, the Sudanese Air Force bombed a Samaritan's Purse-funded Bible college. Amazingly, no students or faculty members on campus were harmed, but two buildings were destroyed. The Burmese army is doing its best to rid Burma of the Kachin people, a predominantly Christian people group. One man who had lost one of his children asked me, who cares, and who do I complain to? Holy Trinity Church of Moscow was destroyed on September 6th with government approval. The pastor, Vasily Romiu, was forced to stand and watch as everything of value was carted off by the police. An estimated 30,000 Christians are currently detained in labor camps throughout North Korea. Conditions there are brutal. Half of them die from starvation or malnutrition, while the rest succumb to exhaustion, disease, and torture. After Egyptians rallied together to overthrow their country's dictatorship, Muslim radicals began burning Christian-owned buildings, kidnapping people, and threatening that any Christian who dares to leave his house will be killed. Asiya Bibi, a Pakistani wife and mother, was beaten, charged with blasphemy, and sentenced to death. Her crime was boldly declaring to mocking co-workers, our Christ sacrificed his life on the cross for our sins. Our Christ is alive. On July 23rd, Pastor Ponichin George was kidnapped and forced to endure a week of near-death torture. They pointed the gun at me and they're saying, yes, come. Immediately, as soon as I entered in the vehicle, they start the vehicle. Within a second, they move like fast, like anything. And they were tidying my both hand backside. It was so painful. And sitting in that place for 12 hours a day, every evening they come and they ask and they put behind me pistol and I said, I am a servant of God, I am a pastor, I have no money. After Sunday night, four night, we were desperately in a jungle. It was completely rainy and we couldn't, they, they, they have no, no shelter, nothing as such. I had only a small mat covering my, myself. I could not, I could not see because 
so much mosquito was coming mosquitoes mosquitoes was coming in 100 you know not one or two and my eyes were tight and i can't see anything nobody is with me this fellow with angry mood they came and they tied me and they left and all my joints are paining like anything i can't do anything i can't move i cannot do anything in my life then around one o'clock no this boy came and he said you can we are going to release you i felt the presence of god because of our people praying around the world and because of their prayer i am alive i am back to life i want to request them please kindly afford our leaders and our pastors and the believe and our believers and the ministry that we have in northeast as these events come to light our earnest desire is for you to pray as hebrew says remember those in prison as if you were their fellow prisoners and those who were mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering please do not close your eyes to their need but pray those same prayer requests that they put up there in the video are the ones we're going to highlight how we could really pray more intelligently for the persecuted brothers and believers around the world and uh, I'm highlighting the the needs we just saw so I want you to just pray those three specific prayers all right along with the specific needs we saw in the video and then, like I said anybody else who might know from the Barnabas fund um the magazines other things that you might know um concerning persecuted church please pray for them as well all right so let's take a little time turn around with each other and groups of four or five and it'll be posted up here specific needs if you can't remember what they were in the video okay we're putting them up so that you could look at them and be specific in your prayers i truly believe us praying makes such a difference the gentleman in the in the testimony you saw that was an answer to prayer just like paul in prison it was an answer to prayer christians praying miraculous things happen so let's pray for our brothers and sisters
Okay, thank you guys. If you could wrap it up. Remember to remember these folks as you go home. Let's remember them throughout the week. And um, they highlighted right here some of the things we saw in the video. Let's remember to continue to pray for them because God will work in and through us in and through them and in through those who are being persecuted, changing their hearts that they might come to know him. Thank you. Thank you, Elder Andley. We want to say a special welcome to those folks who are with us this morning visiting. And uh, we have a group who's here and uh, some other individuals whose names are highlighted in our guest book. Uh, unfortunately, they're intermingled. So I'm going to do something just a little different. And I'm going to invite uh, those persons who are visiting uh, the group from the Bahamas, from Bahamas Air. If, if, if you can stand, those of you who are here from the Bahamas Air Pension Fund, um, please, please stand so we may say a special hello to you. Yeah. Welcome, welcome. These ladies and gentlemen would have put their time in and are all retired and enjoying the wonderful life of retirement. So it's good to have you here with Grace this morning. For those of you who are also visiting for the first time here at Grace, if you are with us here, please stand so we may say hello, or if you haven't been here for a very, very long time, and we just want to say hello. So if it's your first time, please stand. We have a visitor in the back. Is there anyone else? Another lady in the fiddle here. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Uh, for coming out this morning and certainly for all of you we're hoping that you will remain behind the church just for a few moments uh, we have some light refreshments that we've made for you uh, more importantly an opportunity for our leadership to get to say hello touch you and uh, certainly extend an additional invitation to you to come and visit with us once again and so on behalf of the leadership it is my privilege to welcome you all here this morning at this time I'm going to call Adam to assist us with our scripture verse to remember. Morning, Grace. Because of the nature of our service, I'm not going to be try to be funny today. Um, it's kind of more of a somber day, not a sad day, but a somber day, as we remember those who suffer around the world for, for the sake of Christ. Um, like we said, we're doing Romans 12, 9 through 13, but we're stopping at against you. And what is the opening line, the first sentence? All right, we can look down on our bulletins. Love must be... Not can be, must be. That's the same as saying love is. That make any sense? Love must be sincere, otherwise it is not love. He says it right before, giving us our instructions. All right, love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Devoted to one another in love. Central fervor, serving the Lord, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer, share with the Lord's people who are in need, practice hospitality. All right, now that we said the whole thing, we're going to just be, we're going to be learning this in pieces. We're going to go from love must be sincere to be devoted to one another in love. Now just remember, even when it says be devoted to another, one another in love, that's right after saying love must be. Oh, we've been paying attention. All right, no, I said no joking. All right, Romans 12 and 9. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. All right, next, next week we'll be adding, because y'all said that off the top of y'all head, right? Yeah, nobody was reading. Y'all mumbling. All right. We're going to do just the first part. I want, this is what we're learning in pieces. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. 
be devoted to one another in love. Next week, we'll be adding honor one another, another above yourselves. So we're going to be learning this in pieces. I know this is a long one. All right, great. See y'all next week. Birthdays. Celebrating birthdays this week, we want to say a happy birthday on November 17th to Wendell Munnings, Jaden Jones. On the 16th, uh, Hugh, and, Hugh and Ty, uh, Marion Evans, Cindy, Sydney Stirrup. On the 15th, celebrating birthday will be China Curry, Gabrielle Mischewis. Um, on the 14th, Lenora Wilson, Gertrude Ferguson, Chris Smith, and Mateo Smith. And celebrating on the 12th, we have Nathan Lushan, uh, Tony Williams Jr. And today's celebrating birthday is Melissa Hutchison. So that's a lot of persons celebrating their birthdays this week. So a happy, 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 happy birthday to all of those persons. And Emily Munnings is also on the 17th as well. Uh, we neglected to put that inside the bulletin, but please pay a special note to that. Thank you, Wendell Munnings. <laughs> also, um, anniversaries. We don't want to forget those persons who are just uh, wonderfully enjoying uh, matrimony. And on the 12th is Danny and Lenora Wilson. And I don't know if I spot Sean those here. Sean and Renee Moore, are they here this morning? enjoying today so just remember them today they celebrate their anniversary and so we just want to ask god's continual blessings on their marriages and for those who are celebrating birthdays may god continue to bless your lives i'm going to invite our sunday school and our, our is any of our birthday celebrants here I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Let's, I'm sorry, I've been told that we need to do this jingle and I apologize for those of you who are celebrating this week. Let's do our jingle and uh, again, this is the opportunity for us to tell you we love you and happy birthday, God's blessings on you. And now uh, we will dismiss our young people uh, to their uh, service, their Sunday school service. together uh, recite our covenant and play God's blessing, blessings on the offering. Shall we together as we read from Proverbs 3, 9, and 10, Luke 6, verse 38. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your substance. Then your bonds will be filled to overflowing and your vats will brim over with new wine. Give and it will be given to you a good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for the opportunity to be able to 
to make funds that we can give back to you, Father. We thank you for the many gifts and blessings upon us, your children. We thank you, O oh God, that as we give unto you, that your work will be furthered here on your kingdom, uh, towards your kingdom in heaven, O oh God. We pray, Father, for those hands that will touch it, Father, that they will do it um, appropriately. And we pray, O oh God, that you will get all the blessings from all our undertakings. Bless this offering now unto your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we want to get our senior pastor on with the word, uh, we're going to do the announcements during the offering this morning. And we have a few uh, announcements. I'm going to ask our brother Ram to come uh, um, with his update, and then we'll do uh, a few other announcements for your hearing. Uh, right after the brother Naldo, you can come. Praise the Lord. Um, just a report of what we are doing in um, hospital ministry and door-to-door -door ministry. When, you, when we complain about our, our cold or fever or pain in the knees or back, but when we go to the hospital, we really see how pain is, what is mean by pain. And a lot of people who are coming to pray along with the patients, they're realizing how blessed we are. And door-to-door -door ministry, we went yesterday, and uh, we got a good number. And we're seeing a lot of people from our church or church-related members are living in this area. And uh, we're getting some uh, counterattacks too, and we are learning how to talk to them with the word of God. So please come and take your share. On Friday evenings, we are not going to door-to-door -door this coming Saturday, but it will be on the first week of uh, December. Uh, I want to read again this scripture, Matthew 6, 33. But seek you first the kingdom of God and, all, and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Last week I told those who are looking for their partners, for husbands or wives, I said, come. But I, I didn't mean to say that you just come there, then you will find. I'm saying, <laughs> so I mean to say is you need to work for God. And first thing is God gave us the commandment is go and preach the gospel. Okay, so we see the people are suffering, but we are people suffering here in Bahamas too. We need to go and visit them. And one testimony is this. There will be a time given for testimony in the coming days, uh, a hospital and door to door but I want to share one thing see the verse clearly says all these things will be added unto you first we have to work for him first few days we are going to few, few weeks we are going to these ministries and I have a testimony in my, in my own life I was wondering my second daughter Deborah Sarah is you know how she behaves how she acts so I was thinking my ministry will be finished when she comes to 16 years old because afterwards she will be running out on the, uh, on the road and I may not have testimony at home. <laughs> so, so what happened is, the scripture said, all these things will be around to you. Two weeks before, she came to me and said, Daddy, I gave my life to the Lord. And I couldn't understand what she's saying. I said, are you sure? And she said, yeah, I was watching this television and God spoke to me. So my point is, so God, God will take care of your needs in your house. So I'm so happy for her that she gave her life to the Lord. Good afternoon. I'm here for Breakaway, woo! And the Blaze. And November is our Suffering Church Month as well, so I'm gonna go through a, a list of announcements. I need you to pay attention. I have a lot that I need, I need to go through fast, okay? So first, today after church, Breakaway and Ablaze students will enjoy together a Splash Sunday today at Casa del Mare right after church. We eat together and play some games and go swimming. Now the theme for today is a can good to enter. So each person who comes has to bring a can good for admission. Uh, these will be donated and only members of Ablaze and Breakaway are allowed today at the, at the Splash Sunday. So after church, the pickup time afterwards is 5 p.m. So be there with your canned goods, Breakaway and Ablaze students. Second, for the past 14 years, we've been celebrating the Suffering Church um, during the month of November. One of the events is for the month is the lock-in, which is this Friday, November 16th and 17th. 
The theme this year is Cries of Freedom. Registration is at 7 to 7.30, and you can go out. We're going to have a table set up right outside after church with Breakaway. You can go there with your, your, um, your children and sign them up for this week. The pickup time is Saturday at 8 a.m., and the admission is $15. We'll also be selling green ribbons, which you may see scattered around today, for, um, to donate $1 to get the green ribbon to help with um, some items that we're purchasing for the Suffering Church. Also, um, on Friday, November 30th, at 7.30 p.m., we'll host a silent auction as a fundraiser for our trip to the Acquire the Fire Youth Con Conference, which is in February. You'll be asked to purchase a ticket, come and bid on donated items on display. It is promised to be a very relaxing and enjoyable evening with music, conversation, and refreshments. Doors open at 7.30 and the bidding begins at 7.45 and ends at 9. Right? Um, the venue for the event, I will have to get for you later. But um, the table outside will have tickets for sale for that. If you have an item that you want to donate for the auction, you can also let us know. And we also have letters available for businesses if you want to assist with soliciting items. And finally, during the month of November, we'll be collecting shoe boxes. We're partnering with an organization, IOT, um, which means it's our turn, uh, which is a youth organization and an initiative called Reaching the Heart with a Shoe Box. The concept is during the month of December, you collect a shoe box, um, and each one of these boxes will have items that will be given to the elderly. Um, so we're hoping to distribute 200 of these shoe boxes to the homes for the elderly when we go Christmas caroling in December. There will be a box next week outside, so start bringing those shoe boxes next week. So anything related to Breakaway and the youth, come see us at the table after church today. Woo! Oh, praise God. Praise God. This is a worship service, you know. And even the news is worship because the news is telling you what God is doing among his people. You get it? So even the news is worship. And I just praise God when I see Naldo standing up here and speaking with so much passion and I get a chance to see the new tier of leadership coming in the church. I praise God. Like they say, woo! Naldo is a married man now, so that, woo, me, me and plenty then, so. Anyway, we leave that alone. No, but it's really a blessing when you see men like Brian and Adam and, and Naldo and, and um, all of them that come up here. Thank God. Grace, you know, we were praying this morning for the suffering church. But you know, truly, while we have the freedom, you know, when we pray for the suffering church, we're praying for them to be free to carry out the work of Christ. We are free to carry out the work of Christ. And we have a different prayer for us who are free, that those who are free will embrace their freedom to accomplish all that Christ intend to be accomplished through the freedom he's bestowed upon us. Grace, our senior pastor, Pastor Lyle Bell, is at the center of organizing the fight on behalf of the Christian Council Against Gambling. And you know, you know, you know, Pastor Lyle have a hard mouth. It seems as though that's, that's just a quality you need to be pastor of this church or elder of this church. And of course, Pastor Lyle have the hardest mouth. But even hard mouth fellas sometimes, when they look at what needs to happen, they get scared and they wonder, can, can, this, can the Lord really accomplish this through me? I know at the beginning of this week, Pastor Lyle was feeling that because he expressed it to me. And, um, uh, and we prayed for him, and I think he felt on Thursday that he started to see a little turn in the atmosphere in terms of what the church was prepared to do. We saw the church come together in a unique way on Thursday, like we hadn't seen for a long time, church leaders coming together and uh, coming together around this issue to tell you to vote no. The only way we are going to win this thing is if you feel that you have to get out there. Do not feel like it's over. We can win this, but you all have to get up and go out there and vote. 
You understand? It has to register. That's number one. Number two, the real strategy of how we're going to win this thing, and Pastor Lyle will be laying out some things that we're doing, but the real way we're going to win this is through prayer. Now, we have the freedom to gather in prayer. You see, we were just praying for other people's freedom. We were praying for them to have what we already have. Now, what we could do with it? Well, we get a chance to meet in none less than the public square downtown for prayer in the square. And we praying against an initiative that seemed to be pushed by the government. Well, we could pray against it. But you know what? When we meet in the square tomorrow's churches, they laugh us to scorn if we got two or three people there. Well, tomorrow night, Grace Praise Team is responsible for leading the worship, and we would like to see Grace out there in full force. Now, let me tell, I'll be honest, we don't want to just see the 50 of us who would come up regularly when you call for prayer. You see, this is a time when you are going to stay to the nation what you believe and this is the time when you're going to say to your god i know i could approach your throne so we're going to meet there at 7 30 tomorrow grace please this is serious business now this is serious business let's show up there to appeal to our god to save our nation that's our theme save our nation 7 30 to 9 We'll meet in the square for prayer and grace. I am appealing to you. I am appealing to you. We need all hands on deck now. There's a new message. There's a new way of sending messages in this country, and nobody have a more potent message than the church. Please, Grace, please. I don't want to have, to have Pastor Lyle come up here and spend his message time begging you. So the time I just took from your message, Pastor Lyle, I figure I'll beg on your behalf. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Tinkle. Uh, very quickly, Grace, just two quick announcements for you. Uh, just want to remind the men you should have received a document uh, questionnaire that we would like for you to please fill out. Uh, we know men don't like writing stuff, so ask your wife to fill out the information for you if you wish. Um, but it is pertinent information that we require to be able to continue to plan uh, for the needs of, needs of the men of grace. Uh, the Sisters Fellowship just had a wonderful event the other uh, night. Um, had my wife coming home um, after curfew, um, but uh, we, we've dealt with that matter. And um, so we want to encourage the men also to, to let's plan some wonderful events that we can fellowship together. Last announcement is a reminder of next week, Saturday, uh, the 17th at 6 a.m., the sun is up, so don't get scared by the time. 6 a.m., we have the Grace uh, Community Walkathon. I cannot get in that high-pitched sound that Brother Dave uh, used normally to excite you, uh, but know that he would want every one of you to be there. I understand there are three persons who are helping with training. You can see Brother Godfather, who can do the race in, I understand, 20 steps because of the length of his legs. Um, you can also see our Brother Colin, who is also training for very small steps. It will take you longer, but you will finish. And if you were to see Pastor Tinkle, he will teach you how to start and finish at the finish line. So looking for all of you to be there this morning. A little bit of light humor as we continue in our worship this morning. I'm going to actually stand as we prepare for the ministry of the word uh, led by a senior pastor, Lyle Bethel. And may God continue to bless your lives as we honor him. You deserve the glory.
Amen. Well, good afternoon, church.